that being, win a championship. And it could happen tonight. Holding a 3-2 series lead, the Marlies can firmly place their hard-fought series with the Texas Stars in the books with a victory. And, in the process, etch their place in history. By all accounts, that's exactly what they should do. Which should say nothing to the detriment of their opponent. The Stars have admirably countered the Marlies for large portions of this series. Particularly in its early stages. Holding Toronto's top line of Andreas Johnson, Miro Altonen and Carl Grundstrom did just two points, through the first three games, the Marlies had simply no answer for a suffocating Texas defense. Since the sweeping their way through rounds two and three, it's Texas who serves as the first team posing a real threat to the Marlies. A threat they haven't faced since the Utica Comets took them the distance in round one. The common misconception of the Marlies throughout the regular season is their success was solely attributed to their roster's talent. In all fairness, icing an opening night lineup featuring Johnson, Kasperi Kapanen, Nikita Soshnikov and Travis Dermott can trigger such reactions. Yet, this Marlies team refuses to skate by on talent alone. In fact, knowing they permanently lost Kapanen and Sashnikov, along with valuable contributors in Kirby Reichel and Renat Valley of the Boot, and proceeded to maintain their dominance should prove just that. No, this Marley's team is something special. A testament to a perfect cohesion of talent and hard work bound to a lineup in which each player knows his role and executes it to the T. Offense offensively, as Texas proceeded to shut down line 1, lines 2 through 4 rows to the occasion. Frederick Godier managed a paltry 18 points in 57 games during the regular season. In the playoffs, he sits with 8 and 17. Next, it's Dimitro Tymashov, he who perfected a disappearing act from October to April. Dominating on some nights while vanishing on others, Tymashov bounced around the Marlies lineup, unable to harness the consistency befitting of his talents. Come playoff time, however, and he's a whole different player. The 21-year-old has since managed 12 points in 18 games. All while leading the all in power play goals with four. What more can one say about the fourth line? A group who, by all accounts, is perhaps the most vital factor influencing the Marlies' success. Comprised of Trevor Moore, Adam Brooks and Mason Marchment, the trio could realistically slot in as a top five second line on any of the AHL's rosters. Instead, the Marlies get to run them as their fourth. And, better yet, match them up against opposing fourths. It's this overwhelming depth, led by Moore's 16 points in 18 games, good for fourth in postseason scoring, that has pushed the Marlies to the brink of Calder Cup glory. Not only does this team enjoy the pleasure of icing the AHL's most lethal top line, they can follow it up with three consecutive second units. No other team in the all, or perhaps even hockey in general, can say the same. Defense earning focus to the blue line, the Marlies back end has experienced a similar shouldering of the load. Lost in the chaos of their success lies the fact that Justin Hall has put forth a relatively subpar performance in the final. For Jeff Baylett's possession metrics, Hall's 52.2% CF registers as the lowest total amongst all Marlies defensemen. While an above 50% possession may seem like a high number, it's important to contextualize. As Mark pales in comparison to, say, a teammate like Timothy Liljegren, who sits at a 68.1%. Speaking of Liljegren, he serves as just one example of the D collectively elevating their games to compensate. Hall certainly hasn't been bad. It's just that he operates as a linchpin of the Marley's blue line. So, when he stumbles, you notice. Liljegren, who remains 16 months younger than any other all-defenseman, has assumed some of the puck-moving slack. Carrying himself with more confidence than any prior occasion, the Uber rookie has begun successfully executing plays he'd otherwise declined to attempt in the regular season. The Marlies defenders made sure that the puck got out of their end in a hurry last night. 
A nifty little bank pass from Liljegren leads to a pick zone exit here. Pick.twitter.com slash ZQFFW6NA6, Kevin Papetti, at Kapapetti, June 10, 2018 This progression from Liljegren gives the Marlies a third pairing capable of not only pushing possession, but clearing the zone effectively and efficiently as well. A rare luxury in the all, Martin Marinson has followed suit. The towering blue liner continues to thoroughly impress in these playoffs, perhaps breathing new life into a career previously in doubt. As expected, Marinson has continued his elite ability to prevent zone entries. Yet, his true value shines through upon realizing he sits at a 56.7% CF% percent through five finals games. A mark he holds despite facing the best Texas can offer. He's even chipped in offensively. With 7 points in 18 games, Marinson's production surge is punctuated by this jaw-dropper of a dicky. Game 6 series is certainly not over. Although, the Marlies have already made their mark. Rarely does one witness a team harness equal levels of talent and accountability to such perfection. This isn't a lineup comprised of roster bubble veterans. No, it's the kids who steer the ship. Kids who will, one day, attempt to repeat this success just 20 minutes down the road from their current home. Thanks for reading.